Working with Planner is a great way of being able to manage the tasks that are associated with our teams. And one of the things that we explored in the, uh, in the first video in this series is that we can create our tasks automatically based on something else happening within Microsoft 365. We're going to be continuing that journey and we're going to look at how we can provide more context to the task by adding in attachments. In the first video, we worked with the scenario of an email coming in, which we flag, and it then creates a task within Planner for me to go and do something with it. And there's more that we can do with those tasks once they're, uh, when they're actually created within Planner. So as an example, if I have a task that's already been created, uh, we looked first time around at giving it a name and giving it a description, but we can also add attachments. And so this is the part that we're now going to look at, how we can fill this attachments area automatically. Before we do that, we just need to understand exactly what, um, where the what happens with the attachments when we actually add them into our, uh, into our planner. So I'm going to select something from my computer. I'm just going to go and upload something. Let's go for a nice picture. Okay, and so it, for all intents and purposes, it now appears like that is now an attachment on that planner task. Actually, what's happened behind the scenes it, uh, is that it's put it into the shared document library for the site that's associated with a Microsoft 365 group where my planner is associated to. So that's exactly the same as what we're going to do now with our attachments. We're going to take our attachments from our email we're going to create it in the shared document library. And the, this is the ideal place to put it because uh, generally we give somebody access to the Microsoft 365 group. If they've got access to the planner, they will also have access to the, uh, to the SharePoint site behind the scenes, all associated with the same group. So they will have access to everything that they need. We'll then take that URL and we'll place that as an attachment into our task. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So I'm going to start building from where I left off in video one, which was where we created the task and we'd updated some task details with the basic information that I needed. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do is deal with creating a file in SharePoint based on the attachment that I've received from, uh, from Outlook. So let's go and add an action. Now, when I actually uh, use this particular trigger, I get some attachment information uh, from the actual trigger itself. And one of those things is attachment content, but it doesn't quite give me the full byte array that I need to go and create the file successfully within, uh, within SharePoint. So because of that, I'm going to use get an attachment to start off with, just so that I can get the full information of the attachment from my email. So I'm going to go and find get attachments and I'm going to select the Microsoft 365 uh, Outlook one. And let's go and select the message ID. So this is the ID of the message that comes from the trigger. So I can use message ID as the dynamic content. I am going to take the attachment ID. And if I just start searching for attachment here, then one of the things that I will have is an attachment ID. Now when I click that, it's going to put it into a loop. And that's absolutely fine because there could be several attachments that are all part and parcel of this email. So I'm going to get the attachment. I now need to create that email, uh, attachment or create that file in SharePoint so that it's somewhere central for me to reference on my, uh, in my planner task. So I'm going to go and select create file. So from my create file, I'm going to take my site address and I'm going to select flow bytes. So that's my site, uh, which is associated with my group. I'm going to use my shared documents. So my de main documents library, I can then give it a file name and some file content. So let's just go and search for name and I'm going to use the name from get attachment V2. So that's going to give me the file name and the content, which is going to be the content bytes from get attachment. Now, this gives me the full, uh, the full byte array that I need to create the file successfully. Um, so I'm going to use that one. 
And let's just quickly rename that. Awesome. So, so far, we've got the attachment. I've created it in SharePoint. So, now that I'm starting to build out um, my flow, uh, I now need to start thinking about how I get the information from SharePoint uh, and from this, uh, from this loop into my update task details so that I can start to type in um, or start to get the, the attachments in there. What the action uh, asks me for is three pieces of information. It asks me for an alias, a, re uh, a URL, and also a, uh, a type of document. So uh, by default, it starts off in this, text, uh, in this text form type approach. And this is really designed for me to put one or two things in there that are manual. So I can go and specify each one of these as part of my flow, and each time it's going to go through and add those in. If I want to add multiple options into here, then I have to work uh, slightly more. I have to use this little uh, input um, switch over here to change it from being a single, ent uh, single entry into, I'm going to give you a, an array, or uh, basically I'm going to give you a JSON payload to then go and upload into, um, into the task. But how do I know what needs to go in this reference uh, in this references structure here? I'm just going to switch back once more, and I'm going to look at the different things that I've got here. So I can fill these boxes in. So my alias is going to be my file name, my re uh, resource, Is going to be a URL, and that's going to take me to. Um, is this is all just mock at the moment, just because I want to see what gets created. Uh, but it's going to be the link to where I want my file to go. And as you can see, I can select the type of uh, file reference, so I can select what type of file it is. Notice that it's only the Microsoft 365 supported types of file. If it's anything other than uh, than PowerPoint through to PDF, then I need to push it down as other. Other things are fine but I just need to be able to declare it. So I'm just gonna select other for now. Once I've done this, I can then switch back across to the, uh, to the JSON view, and then it shows me the, the structure that I need. So I need to provide it an alias, a resource link, and a type, and that's the format that I need to follow. Because I can enter several items, it has given me two square brackets at either side, that denotes that it's a JSON array. So I can give it an array, which is a list of different files to attach in there, and it will go and process all of those for me. So this is what I want to build dynamically based on the attachments that I get from my email. And I'm gonna copy just the parts that I want from this. And it's just going to be from uh, those, uh, those internal pieces, just that, J uh, that JSON body there. So I've copied that, and what I'm gonna do is just delete the rest of that out because I don't need it. So now that is on my clipboard. I'm going to come back up to the top and we now need to start building our array. In order to build an array, I need to create a variable for it in the first instance. So I'm gonna go and add an, uh, a new action here and I'm gonna declare or initialize my variable. This is going to be my attachments variable. And if I look at my types, I've got boolean, I've got string, and I've even got array down the bottom. So that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in that array because that's what I want to build. This is going to allow me to have one, several, or even zero, actually, uh, items that are coming through. So let's just go and rename that so I can keep this nice and tidy. Attachments, that's better than that. So let's go and apply to each. So now we're in our loop. Each time we loop through, we want to add our, uh, the new information about that particular attachment into the array. So I'm gonna add an action and let me just go and find my variables connector because one of the options that I have in here is I have a append to array variable. So each time it goes round, it's gonna add it's gonna add the first one, then the second time round it's gonna add the second one, and then the third one, and then the fourth one. It builds a big list for us. So I'm going to append to the array. I'm gonna select which variable I want, which is my attachments, and from there I'm going to paste in my JSON that I've copied from further down, and I'm just clearing out some of the additional white space that I don't necessarily want. But you can see here that I now need to provide it with an alias, a link and a type. 
So, let's clear these out to start off with. So, I need an alias. And for the purposes of this, I'm going to use the file name. This could be just the name of the file. It could be something that is uniquely identifying it. Uh, but just for the, just for ease, I'm going to say that I'm going to take the uh, the name. And so that's what's going to be displayed in my card when I actually go and uh, utilize, um, go, go and look at the task. I then need to provide a resource link. Now this is a link that goes directly to that uh, that particular item. So that when I click on it, it's going to open. Now I can build a URL from the information that I get from create file, but I want to do something slightly more elegant and tidy. So I'm gonna go and add a new action in here and I'm going to go and get file properties because one of the file properties that I actually get back from this action is I get the ability to use link to item. So that will give me, without having to do any additional work uh, and worrying about what the URL looks like, it will just give me a link directly to that particular file. So what it's asking for is the site address, it's asking for the library, which is in my documents, and it's asking for the ID of the item that we want to retrieve. Now that's really useful because that's something that I get back from create file. So I can select the item ID. So now I know for certain that the file that gets created from the create file attachment um, is also then going to uh, give me the right information from get file properties because I'm giving it that ID. So then when I come down to my append to array, I can then go and search in my dynamic content for a link and I can use link to item. For the purpose of this demo, I am going to leave this, the type as other. Um, I could do some um, some switching or add some conditional logic in before this to figure out what type of file it is and then set that um, to the correct value. Uh, but I am going to leave this just as it is for now. I'm just going to leave it as other. So let's just collapse those back down. So now that I've created, I've got my attachment. I've created the file within SharePoint. I've created the JSON payload, which contains the file name and the link to it. So all I need to do now is add that uh, variable for my attachments into references. So now if I just go and run this as a test, we can see this in action. So let's go and test. So let's come from here, let's come back to my emails. Oh, yeah, launcher. So here's my email. I'm going to mark this as flagged. So we're going to process it. That is going to then start my flow. And so what is my flow doing? Well, it's going and it's going, grabbing, uh, going to grab the information. It's going to find the attachments. It's going to get the attachments and it's going to then create it within SharePoint. There it is. There's my attachment. Let's come back to my flow again. I'm then going to build my array. So I've got my file name in there. I've got my link to it. So I'm building all of the information that I need. We're then creating the task, just like we did in the, in the first part of the, uh, of the series. But when it comes to actually updating the task, I've then, been, I've then given it an array. So that now means that when I come back to look at my planner, then let's come out of there. Let's just give this a quick refresh. I've got my task and I've got my file link there. Let's just open it up. So here I can see here's my file. And if I go and open it, there we go. My, uh, I've opened my attachment. So combining this into our automation uh, and the creation of our tasks means that we're not only creating uh, basic information in the task, we're also now providing contextual information. Really useful for our users to be able to go to one place to see everything that they need to see in order to, uh, in order to complete that task. What we'll do next time is look at how we can do a, uh, use a similar sort of process and look at creating the individual steps, the checklist, for then uh, finishing off all the information that we potentially need uh, to get our task up and running and assigned to a user. But for now, I hope that was useful. If you do have questions, 
please do feel free to post into the comments. I'll be happy to help you with it in any way that I can. Feel free to find me on Twitter at MattWeston365 or please do find me on LinkedIn again at MattWeston365. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video. Look after yourselves and I'll look forward to speaking to you again soon.